This video is brought to you by Cooper City Realty. We are Cooper City. All right, so this problem seems more difficult than it actually is. It is cumbersome and it is time consuming, um, but it's really not that difficult. It's just a bunch of steps. So the first thing it asks you to find is the centroid right here, this Y bar, right? This right here, we have to find that of the entire beam. So in order to do that, if you remember, it's the summation of Y times the area over the summation of just the area, and that equals y bar. So I created this little chart here so it'll make it easier for us to keep track of all our numbers. So first, let's take a look at what the y is. I split it up into sections. This is gonna be section one, this is gonna be section two, and this is gonna be section three. We only need three sections uh, because on this side, this section two is the same as this, this section three is the same as that. So when we do our final calculations to figure out the summation, all of the y times the a, all of the a, we're going to make sure that we have two of these and two of these. So let's get started on our first section. So if you look here, the y bar, it's a rectangle, so it's just half the height. So this is 0.45, so half of that height right here would be 0.225. Alright, so since we have the y for our first section, let's move on to the second section. So remember, the centroid of a triangle is up one-third from the base. So it'd be, our height here is 0.4, so it'd be 0.4 divided by 3. But don't forget, we have to bring it all the way down here, right? So it's going to be 0 0.4, which is the height of the triangle, divided by 3 to get you the centroid of just that section, plus this right here, this 0 0.05, this other, thing, this other height of this rectangle. One more time. For y of section 2, we're going to do 0.4, which is the height, divided by three because the centroid of a triangle is up one third from the base, but don't forget to bring it all the way down to here, right? So it'd be plus 0 0.05. So that gives us 0 0.183, repeating. This one's much easier. Section three is much easier. It's just half of the height because it's a rectangle. Um, and our line down here, it's already on it. So it's gonna be 0 0.05 divided by two, which is gonna be 0.025. So now let's take a look at our areas. That's simply just for this base times height. And then of course for a triangle, it's base times height divided by two. And for this third section, it's just base times height. Okay, so now that I filled this out and I filled out y times a, y times a is literally that. So you take the y and you multiply it by the a and you put it in this little box here. So remember, it's the summation of all the y times a's divided by all the areas, right? So we have our y times a's and we have our areas. But don't forget that there's two of these triangles, there's one here and there's one here, and there's two of these rectangles, there's one here and one here. So in order to do this, in order to find y times a, you're going to add up the y times a for one, you're going to add up the y times a for two, but you're going to do that again because you have that on the other side. You're going to add up the y times a for three, right here but you're gonna do that again because you have it on the other side. This is the, the y times a. And all of that will be over the a's. So you take a look at your a's. You have an a at one, you have an a at two, but you have another one, another triangle over here. So you're gonna do two plus the, two, the section two again, plus section three, plus the section three on that side. So one more time, so it could seem a little bit confusing. The, to find y bar, it's y, the summation of y times a over the summation of a, right? So we have only one section one. However, we have two section twos and we have three, two section threes, right? We only have this one, but we have two triangles and we have two rectangles here. So we need to find the summation of all of it. We found the y times a for one, two, and three. So we have section one, that stands alone, so we just put section one for the YA. But we have two of these. So we have section two, but we have two of them, so we're gonna put two section two twice. And we have section three, but we have two of them, so we're gonna do section three twice. And then same thing with the areas. So the summation of Y times A is equal to 0 0.04604119. The summation of just A is going to be equal to 0 0.255. So then you divide these two numbers right here. You divide the summation of Y divided by the summation of A. 
and that is going to come out to be y bar is equal to 0 0.180555557. And this is in meters. So there you are, there's the first part of the problem, finding y bar. So we're going to use this into the next part of the equation, which is finding the moment of inertia about this line here. So let's go ahead and clean this up. All right, so the next part of this problem asks for the moment of inertia about this line, which is basically y bar. So remember that to find the moment of inertia, when taking it in parts, you want to do i plus a d squared. So our i is different based on the shape. So i for the square or rectangle is going to be base times height to the third over 12, right? Our i in terms of a triangle is going to be base times height to the third over 36. So remember when you're working with a rectangle or working with a triangle to have the right i equation. So this is the main equation and then you use i for rectangles or i for triangles. It should be a triangle. The next step of this equation is just our area, the area of the section. Our d is going to be the absolute value between the difference in value between y bar and the y we have here. So remember this is for section 1, this is for section 2, and this is for section 3. So remember it's the difference between the y bar and the y, the difference in the values. And it's the absolute value, so if you get a negative, take away the negative. It's just the, the absolute value difference between those two. Alright, so let's get started on finding the moment of inertia of just section 1 here. So it's a rectangle, so we're going to use this sort of i, and our base is going to be here, and our height is going to be this way. So our base is this way, and our height is going to be this way. So the base of this one is 0 0.3, 0 0.3. The height of section 1 is 0.45. Remember, that's to the third. Divided by 12, plus the area of section 1, 0.35 times the difference between y bar and y. So for y, right here we have 0.25, and remember our y bar was 0.18 whatever. So remember our d is gonna be y minus y bar. The reason I did y minus y bar and not y bar minus y was because this will give us a positive answer. I mean, it really doesn't matter because you square it anyways. So it's literally just subtracting this from this or this from that, and it doesn't matter in this case because you square the d. So you'll be fine either way. So when you take all this together and you compile all these numbers, that's going to give you 0 0.00254474792. And there you go. Remember, moment of inertia is whatever they give you, in this case meters, to the fourth. So that is the moment of inertia of our first section about this line here. So we're going to clean this up a little bit, put this up there, and let's go ahead and find sections 2 and section 3. Alright, so now let's go ahead and find the moment of inertia of section 2 specifically. So we're dealing with a triangle now, so we're going to use this for our i. So the base right here is 0.2, the height is 0.4, remember that's to the third, divided by 36, plus the area of that triangle is 0 0.04 and we're going to do y minus y bar or y bar minus y it doesn't matter because you're going to square it anyways and when you compile all that together the moment of inertia of the second section about that line is going to be 0 0.00035568 meters to the fourth don't forget your units so let's go ahead and put this up there and go ahead and find moment of inertia for section 3. So in terms of section 3, we're dealing with a rectangle again. So it's going to be this for the i. So the base of section 3 is 0.4. The height of section 3 is 0 0.05. Make sure that's to the third. Divided by 12. Plus the area is 0.02. And then our D is going to be Y bar minus Y, or Y minus Y bar, it doesn't really matter because you're going to square it anyways. It's the absolute value difference between Y bar and the Y's that we got. So when you compile all this together, 
That's going to give you a moment of inertia for section 3 of 0 0.0004888118 meters to the fourth. So let's go ahead and put this one up there and come back to the final answer. All right, so we found the moment of inertia for each specific section, for one, for two, for three. Don't forget that there's two of these, and there's two of these. There's two of the triangles and two of the rectangles. So whatever we get for two, make sure to multiply it by two. Whatever we get for three, make sure to multiply it by two as well. Because we have two of the threes and two of the twos, right? We have just this one, we have the triangle, we have the triangle, this one and this one. So we're going to multiply this by two, multiply it by two. So all you have to do is take the one, add it to the two, but don't forget to multiply it by two because you have two of these, and then add it to the three, and again, don't forget to multiply it by two because you have a rectangle here and a rectangle here. And when you do that with those numbers, you get your final answer, the moment of shot about this line, which is going to come out to be 4.23. 10 to the negative 3 meters to the 4th. There you go. There's your final answer. Take care.